Hi, everyone. Welcome to True Disabled Story. My name is Nico, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with floppy blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, and a black headset around my head. I'm wearing a blue uh, shirt, t-shirt with a modified Superman logo on it. I'm seated in front of an office background. Like about 20% of the US population and a full 17% of Philadelphians, I'm disabled. Whether we look locally, nationally, or globally, disabled communities are full of dynamic, diverse, and frankly, delightful people with their own stories to tell. All we have to do is listen. As many of you know, I was born disabled. I've never known differently. So when I come into contact with other disabled people um, in my personal, professional, or civic life, I wanna know their perspectives. I wanna know their stories. Uh, and that brings me to today's guest. I can't wait to hear what Zakira has to say. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Hi, Zakira, how are you doing? Hi, Nico, I am good. Thank you for having me. Of course, we'll hop right into it. So Zakira, uh, tell us your diagnosis story. What was your path to diagnosis like? Was this um, a surprise for you and your supports or was it maybe something you were actively pursuing or suspecting? Tell us that story. Yes, and so I think I would love to rewind and even introduce myself because um, I'm sure whether they're listening or watching, they're like, who is this person? So yes, I am Jakia. I am uh, a childhood eye cancer survivor. And so um, I am wearing a right prosthetic eye in my right eye and I see you in my left. Um, but then I'm also a, you know, a brown skinned woman wearing a pink head wrap and a pink shirt. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was diagnosed when I was the first time I was diagnosed. My mom saw it at my six month uh, checkup, but it wasn't officially diagnosed um, and get, gotten a second opinion until a few months later. And then shortly after that, it was a short, maybe less than a month time span that the minute that my parents got that second diagnosis to confirm that I have retinoblastoma, which is a rare childhood eye cancer. And if I do not have surgery to remove my eye right now, it could eventually lead to death or something could get worse. So thankfully, because of everything just happening in fast movement, I am uh, completely blind in my right eye, but I can see in my left eye. It's still about 2020 vision, despite now having glaucoma, which makes things a little bit blurry a little bit. But um, as a result of the radiation treatment to continue to keep the tumor down for you know, 30 plus years, I also have a hearing loss. So um, I heavily depend on captions when we're using online. If I'm interacting with people in person, I use lip reading. So it would really, um, my parents really just um, following their intuition and uh, it was completely new for them. You know, of course, emotionally, they had to go through a few things, but, you know, I too was technically officially born with the diagnosis because that's all I've ever known. All I've ever known is life with one eye. Zakira, thank you so much. I'm really glad that uh, your parents moved quickly and got you that surgery. Uh, difficult to tell that, that one eye is prosthetic. So what impact has uh, your early childhood cancer battle uh, had on, on the rest of your life? Do you have uh, special medical procedure or special medical processes or checkups that you have to do? Yeah, and so being a childhood eye cancer survivor means a lot more checkups and doctor appointments than most people could even stand. <laughs> so for me, for a while, the, the most popular one was the prosthetic eye. Um, most of the time, if someone needs to get a prosthetic arm or a prosthetic leg, it's usually just, you know, one, two, maybe three times, as long as your weight doesn't fluctuate. But for me, because I was a growing human being, I had to go every six months to get a new eye so that it fits my face. Um, so right now, you know, thankfully, by the time I turned 18 years old, um, uh, it's just a matter of, you know, keeping a, a freshly new polish, just like you would used to polish your silverware. So that was the first appointment that I went to a lot. But then all the way back to back, it was to go and make sure that the tumor did not return. I would go to the ophthalmologist or the eye doctor. Um, and then I would also go to um, a hearing a hearing doctor, audiologist, to make sure that my hearing is not declining. And if it is, I need new, to upgrade technology. And with technology now, hearing aids are the equivalent of headsets and ears. And so there was a lot of appointments throughout my life. And so for a while, of course, 
I've always been taken out of school. And so if, if there's a girl who's just always there all the time, of course, the question is like, well, what's wrong with her? Um, but I think also because um, I was also a, uh, I'm also uh, of a different religious faith. So always having something on my head after I hit puberty that added to the other question that kids would ask. So it was tough because I was always the only one, sometimes the the only one in my school, um, eventually when I started work. So it had definitely been challenging, but in a good way, because it's allowed me to see life through a different lens. I really respect your perspective on that question. Um, interacting with other cultures, other societies, and other practices is, is really a lost art, uh, and part of why I began this video series as well. Thank you so much. So, Zakira, what advice would you give um, people or, I guess, families in this situation that might be dealing with that same diagnosis that you and your family dealt with? Or even if you could go back in time, alas, we don't have time travel yet, but if we did, if you could go back in time and give yourself advice, what would that be? Yeah, you know, the advice I, I give myself, and I'm always self-reflective anyway, so I'm sure I wrote this down in a journal anyway to my future or younger self, but it's definitely to acknowledge the fact, especially my voice. I think, let me rewind a little bit. For a while, um, people were not, were not sure what to call me. This is before we had... Um, now to, to tell, tell everyone, but people are not sure what to make of me, especially because of my voice. And the voice, uh, the deep voice is also a, as a result of the radiation treatment, of all the speech therapy. And then I have another secondary cancer called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which contributes to the deep voice as well. So for a while, I had to just kind of, I would not want to speak up. I would not want to speak up for myself. I would not want to speak up to make friends or any of those things or speak on video series like this. And so the youngest, the younger version of myself would definitely need to know to speak up. It's okay. Your voice has power. Um, and I think I could leave that advice for both other uh, cancer survivors, others who are differently abled, and even the parents. I think if it wasn't for my parents advocating and knowing to speak up and, know, and knowing when... Um, you know, the, the right, we did not have the right doctor or it was not the right teacher or not the right speech therapist to speak up and do something about it. So your voice has power and speak up. That's remarkable. Your voice does indeed have power. Zakira, thank you so much. I've loved hearing your perspective. You tell a great story. Uh, and in terms of speaking, you're very polished. So I really appreciate it. As we close our time together today, I want to use this fourth and final question just as space that you and I, Zakira, as disabled people, very rarely get, right? And that is a chance to celebrate yourself, celebrate any wins that you have, like recently or any upcoming wins, perhaps. Um, if you're interested in finding community or building community online, where can people find you? Uh, but just in general, old friend, this is a chance for you to grab your pom poms, hop up on that soapbox, and brag about yourself. Let's hear it. I love that. And so I, I'm actually just not getting better at shooting my own on it, as we can say. So I feel like I'm going to go down a list of things. It's a little bit of both. as how people can find me, how people can continue to work with me and things of that sort. So most recently, I became a TEDx speaker, which is part of why my speaking is so polished, aside from speech therapist. Um, so you can look for my TEDx talk called Seeing Life from a Different Lens on YouTube, on the TEDx website. It's also a play on the name of my book. My mom and I wrote a book together, kind of talking about what it was like um, for her from conception up until I turned 18, um, what it was like to be uh, a childhood eye cancer survivor and pretty much answering the questions in more depth than I did in this conversation. And that book is called Seeing Life Through a Different Lens. Um, and then I also had a podcast version of it uh, where I interviewed some um, others who either have the same eye cancer that I have or they are neurodivergent or they uh, are advocates for it. Um, but most of the topics of my podcast, because when I'm not um, having amazing conversations with others who are differently able, I'm also uh, or disabled, I'm also uh, a brand therapist. So I hope others who confidently tell their stories online and offline. So see Life Different is the podcast. And last but definitely not least, I'm actually working on a documentary series version of everything that I just mentioned. So there's so many people who don't get the chance to tell their stories, who don't get the chance to um, 
have a day in the life of of them, what it is really like to go to all those doctor's appointments, the ups and downs of mental health, but especially from the um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility side. So I'm working on a documentary and I'm still playing around with the title, but of course we're going to keep the brand consistent and most likely it's going to be called Seeing Life from a different lens or see, seeing life differently, something on those lines. But um, currently at the very moment, uh, this is a crowdfund campaign because I would love to have other people involved, other people have their name on the credits and other people to really be a part of the process before it becomes major because the goal is to get it to be distributed. So you can find out all of those things on my website at zakiranayar.com. My first name, my middle name.com. That's Z A A K I R. A H N A Y Y A R dot com. Fantastic. Thank you. I'll put that in the video description for YouTube as well so folks can easily find you. Zakira, yeah. this was a brush of fat air for me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And heck, wherever you go, whatever you do, I'm rooting for you. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank, Thank you, you again. Man.